Hey, guys, look, it's the Teller, the awesome Rec Room lore character. Come on, you play Rec Room, right? Obviously, you know the Teller. He is an important part of the lore. Everyone loves the Teller. No, I hate the Teller, and you don't know the Teller. And if you do know the Teller, all that you know about him is that he exists and that his name is the Teller. But guys, look, look at this 20,000 token necklace. Doesn't the Teller make you want to buy this 20,000 token necklace? The necklace is important to the lore, guys. You have to buy it. Okay, I'm definitely getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, today, we're talking about Rec Room lore and how how it used to be kind of good, and now how it kind of sucks. So let's go back to the beginning, long before any tellers or amulets of elsewhere. From when Rec Room was created in 2016 to like 2019 or 2020, Rec Room didn't even really have any lore, and what it did have was super simple. Basically, the extent of it is that Rec Room is supposed to be a college, and all of the different Rec Room original games were like activities that you could do at the college. The main thing is that all of Rec Room's quests are supposed to be like school theater productions. That's why all of the enemies are lowered down on wires from the rafters, and why all of the levels take place in big auditoriums. In Disc Golf Propulsion, there's a mention of a science department, which fits in with the whole college theme, but it still feels kind of mysterious. We'll get back to that later. And of course, the biggest piece of lore in Original Rec Room is Coach. Coach is the name of the lady whose voice lines are all over the game. She's in the tutorial, and she's in a bunch of Rec Room originals. Coach being this sort of omnipotent being, and also being the only account in Rec Room that's level 99, got people speculating about her true identity and stuff like that. And Rec Room themselves is actually poked fun at this by by having this plaque and crescendo of Coach, except it's like torn, so you can't see what she actually looks like. Ooh. But that was basically it back then, right? It was all just small, fun stuff to base the art style on and get people talking a little bit. That is, until 2021. So for a very short time period on Rec Room, there was like a bug that would render a player model behind the logo on the old title screen where people could see it. So it looked like there was some shadowy figure hiding off in the title screen. This mysterious player on the title screen would be dubbed the Forbidden One by the community and for some reason started being drawn with, like, a purple bucket on his head. Rec Room would officially reference the Forbidden One in the game's patch notes a couple of times, and in May 2021, they decided to do a little thing in the Rec Center that would expand the game's lore a bit and officially add the Forbidden One to it. Basically, what happened is that some text was hidden around the Rec Center in, like, binary, and people would have to go decode that and see what it said. And then when decoded, it would lead people to a room that had another code in it. Most of these codes just translated to random stuff, like someone writing about seeing the Forbidden One. It was mostly just random random, vague stuff. But it was still a fun little hunt. I made a video on it back then. People seemed to like it. You know, maybe they'll do more with it in the future. All good. Eventually, the Forbidden One would be teased to be at RecCon 2021, and they ended up selling a shirt of him there, as well as having some weird dance party event themed around him. At this event, there were some more codes, one of which connected the Forbidden One to Coach, but otherwise they weren't too important. What is of note here is that this is the first time Rec Room would sell an item related to the lore. And this shirt must have sold real well, because it is also not the last time that they would do this. So by now, pretty much every dedicated Rec Room player knew about the Forbidden One, and his final appearance would be in the League of Heroes event in March of 2022. Some cryptic videos started being posted to the Rec Room YouTube channel showing that the Forbidden One had, like, captured a Rec Room staff member, Utini. The same deal as before would happen again, where codes popped up in the Rec Center and people would have to solve them to find a secret room. This time, the secret room was the Forbidden Cave, which had a big countdown timer in it that would lead up to an event that would end off the League of Heroes. The codes that were decrypted were more random stuff that made basically no sense at all. But how about that big event to end off the League of Heroes? Maybe it'd be some sort of big Forbidden One boss fight. Sadly, that is incorrect. The event was actually a really bad parkour course you had to go through over and over and over again until Rec Room staff just decided to end it. For what it's worth, this was kind of Rec Room's first big event that had a bunch of people joining all at once, so in that regard, it could have been a lot worse but it also could have been a lot better. Regardless, somehow doing a lot of parkour in this event would end up defeating the Forbidden One, Rec Room's first major lore character, and he hasn't really been heard from since. If 2016 to, like, 2020 is Rec Room's first era of lore, where everything was pretty simple and it was just the college stuff and coach, then I would consider the Forbidden One to be Rec Room's second era of lore. Overall, I'd consider the Forbidden One era to be decent. Fine enough, right? Like, the codes didn't really make much sense, and the final event kind of sucked, but at least there was, like, a beginning and an end to it, and he was was defeated, and it kinda made sense. Honestly though, guys, my biggest problem with the Forbidden One was that he wasn't using code BVRR. I mean, come on, all you gotta do is remember to type in BVRR when you're buying tokens on Rec Room, or go to my profile just like this and hit the big support button. The other thing is that the Forbidden One didn't really feel a lot like a character, he just kinda felt like some dude that they made up who was evil for no reason. But at least with his backstory and the codes they gave us, you could kind of make some stuff up and at least fill in the blanks yourself. Like, oh, the Forbidden One was once a player who was banished 
forced to be stuck on the title screen forever by Coach, and eventually he escaped, and now he's back to get his revenge. That's probably not even the actual story, but at least it's, like, plausible, right? There's something there. And as we'll see pretty soon here, every character after the Forbidden One doesn't even have that. So let's get into where we're currently at, the third era of Rec Room lore. I'd consider the third era of Rec Room lore to start with the introduction of S. Around July 2022, these messages would start showing up in the store, and very soon after that, poof, there was a new pop-up shop in the Rec Center that had a whole bunch of rare items from the past re-released. These were all items like the Bisu and the Skeleton set, which were all released before the vast majority of Rec Room players joined the game. I'm not going to talk about the ethics of re-releasing old items for money in this video, because we're just here to talk about the lore. Anyways, pretty soon after that, a second pop-up shop from this S character would appear in the Invention Tower. And this shop was the first introduction of the Amulet of Elsewhere, the 20,000 token necklace item. To add even more to this amulet, it was also the first clothing item that would actually be able to trigger stuff in rooms to happen if you were wearing it. So for example, in Invention Tower, if you bought the amulet and you wore it, you would be able to go through this little door here that took you to a secret S hacker area that had some secret codes in it. This amulet also must have made Rec Room a ton of money, because this is where they really kicked it into full gear on making lore items do special things, and then monetizing them as much as they could. For example, pretty soon they would release the Book of Elsewhere, which is an item that you could wear on your back. This book had the same properties as the Amulet of Elsewhere, where it let you go into secret rooms on some maps, and also some other stuff we'll talk about in a bit. So you probably want the book, right? I mean, you want to do the special stuff. Well, no, 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 you can't get the book with tokens, because you have to buy it in a bundle in RecNet, which is at minimum $10. Yes, this was a lore item in Rec Room that if you wanted it, you had to purchase with real money, no matter what. I'm a little bit conflicted on this, because like, on one hand, it's a completely optional purchase, right? Like, you don't have to get the book. It's not like they're forcing you to. So I guess I don't really want to bash Rec Room for doing this too much, like I'm sure a lot of other people do, but it also does just feel a little weird, you know? Anyways, there were more S pop-up shops in the Rec Center. Eventually, there was like a specific room created by an account called S, and this room was like his lair or something, and guess what? It had another pop-up shop in it with exclusive expensive items. So that's pretty much where we're at right now with S. So let's compare S to the Forbidden One and see how he stacks up. I talked about earlier how the Forbidden One wasn't like a great character, but at least there was some stuff there, you know? But with S, we have none of that. None. Here's what we know about S. He's some sort of hacker bringing rare or exclusive items to the game, and, uh, his name is S. That's literally all we know. S has no character, no motivations, no connections to other characters. He's literally just selling you stuff. He literally just exists to sell stuff. And you know, as I said before, Rec Room can get their bag however they want, but why are we trying to tie this into the lore and act like it's some more profound thing than it is and act like this is a character or something that actually matters to Rec Room at all when literally it's just selling you stuff? That is all that it is. And the funny thing is that that's not even it. The next character is arguably even worse. So on Halloween, they put this guy called The Teller in the rec center, and if you were wearing the amulet of elsewhere, you could go up to him and talk to him, and he'd tell you some random fortune that doesn't make any sense. But the next day, if you went up and talked to him, then he would, like, explode or something, and this little sign would be left next to him, which said this. And the sign appears to be written by a character called H, who is part of something called Shadow Inc. Around this time, these random eyes, which were, like, the symbol of The Teller, would start popping up on RecNet. And if you clicked on those eyes, it would take you to this weird hackery page where the teller would write random messages that hinted at what was next. At one point, there were even real-world coordinates on this page that people had to actually go out in real life and find these chests, but none of it really amounted to anything. At one point, if you owned the Book of Elsewhere, which was that $10 item we talked about earlier, you could click on this teller eye, and it would give you a free black-and-white version of the Book of Elsewhere. So if you spent $10 on this book item, and then you went to RecNet, for a while, you could get a free recolor of the book item, for some reason. Eventually, this teller section of RecNet would hint that if you go into Jumbotron with the amulet or book of elsewhere, and you beat it during a certain time frame, something special would happen. And so, sure enough, for a while, if you went and beat Jumbotron, you would get these, like, cuffs of elsewhere, which did all the same stuff all the other elsewhere items did. After that, for a while, if you went to the teller page on RecNet, it would basically tell you to go away and come back later. And it seems that as of now, the page has been removed entirely. And that is literally all that we know 
know about the teller. Honestly, the teller is even worse than S. At least we know why S exists. He exists to hack stuff in and sell you crap and stuff. But the teller, why does he exist? Nobody knows. He just does. And on top of that, the teller also introduced us to H and Shadow Inc., which have literally not been mentioned at all outside of that one sign as far as I know. What is the point of introducing all these characters and random things and acting like they matter and that there's some big whole story going on when really none of it just makes any sense? It was also around this time where they did the invasion event, which I guess also relates to the lore. Remember the science department from Disc Golf Propulsion that I talked about a while back and I said that we'd talk more about it later? Well, right now is later. We're talking about it now. Because for the invasion event, they brought back the concept of the science department and they changed it into being this weird, like futuristic experimental room. And also in the science department during this event, there's this weird robot dude who I think is supposed to act as a kind of tutorial to the event. But you'll never guess, we know literally nothing about this robot dude. And he's in all the ads as if this is supposed to be something we like care about, but he's literally just sitting there. Also, I skipped by this earlier because it is such a stupid small thing, but I feel like I have to mention it. At RecCon 2022, they sold Forbidden One Bubbly, which is like fine, right? But then right next to that, they sold Forsaken One Bubbly. Who is the Forsaken One? Is this supposed to be some, like, good version of the Forbidden One? I don't know. He's literally never been mentioned outside of this one consumable bubbly that you could buy at Reccon. That was literally it. They're not even doing the thing where they introduce a character and sell items about them anymore. They're just skipping the first step entirely and selling items of characters that don't even exist. I am so tired. Sorry if that last section just felt like a bunch of crap thrown together that makes no sense, but that's literally how the lore feels to me right now. In the first era of the lore that I talked about, things felt like thought out, right? With the whole college setup and the quests being theater productions and everything being based off that kind of theme. It was clear enough about how it was presenting itself that it was cohesive, but it also left some stuff to the imagination, which I think was perfect. And then in era two with the forbidden one, you know, it felt a little bit shallow and the codes didn't really make sense and it kind of felt like they were making stuff up as they win. But at least there was somewhat of a character there, and there was like an introduction, and then you fought him, or did parkour, I guess, and then it was over. But then with Era 3, it just feels so much like they're throwing random stuff at the wall without any context, and hoping people will like, make up their own context and like it. But the thing is that if you want people to theorize about something, you gotta give them at least something that makes sense to work off of. If I wanted to theorize about the Teller, or S, and like, how they fit into Rec Room as a whole, or connect to the other characters, where would I even start? There's nothing to say about the teller besides, he may be evil, he may be connected to the invasion event, he may know the Forbidden One, because they are both evil. And I know a whole bunch of you are thinking right now, oh, well, Billabob, you're just stupid. I understand the lore, you just don't. I know all about the Teller and S and how they relate to other characters and stuff like that. But pretty much every single person that said this and I've asked to explain it is basically just making up fan fiction in their head. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when someone tells me they understand the Forsaken One and then they say, oh, the Forsaken One is the Forbidden One's, like, good brother, it's like, that's not based on anything from the game, so I wouldn't really consider that understanding the lore. And also, even if there is someone out there who fully understands the lore with facts as it's presented in the game, I still think it's an issue, because I spend so much time on this game, I make a bunch of videos about it, and it's not just me, I have a bunch of friends who are also that invested in Rec Room, and none of them get the lore either. So even if one person out there does understand the lore, if some of this game's most loyal players, like me and the friends that I asked, don't understand it, then I still think they're probably not explaining it or making it make sense enough. Here's my quick list of suggestions to make Era 4 of the Rec Room lore better than Era 3 has been. First off, make the characters you introduce be actual characters. Give them motivations, a backstory, relationships to other characters that have been introduced, and make them feel actually somewhat fleshed out. Number two, make the lore being introduced actually affect the game somewhat. The invasion event was a pretty good first step at doing this, but there could be more. Like when they were hyping up the Forbidden One and all that, if they released an actual Rec Room original quest based around the Forbidden One or something, that would have been awesome and people wouldn't have forgot it. And number three, give us an enough stuff to actually work with so it actually makes sense for the majority of people who look into it. And optional number four, don't tie it as much to expensive, purchasable items. It just makes it feel cheap. So that's why I think Rec Room lore kinda sucks right now. Let me know your thoughts on the subject in the comments. Check out this video I made where I make stuff with Rec Room Studio. I make a dog and it walks around. It's awesome. But other than that, that's gonna be it for this time. I'll see you later. Goodbye.